Yeah, I know. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me. I am here. I don't know if anyone else is, um, but I am here. And um, let me know if you can hear me, if you can see the donkey. I will be holding it up, um, you know, to show you guys, like, what I'm doing and stuff. Um, and I am wearing pajamas because I don't, I mean, you might as well, right? Um, wear pajamas while you're painting. I can't actually see if anyone's here, so please talk or let me know if you're here, because I think we had a few people showing up for this. So, um, but if you're, um, I'm, I'm going to start because it's 6.03, so hopefully everyone shows up. Um, but if you don't, then I did record this so I can send you recording, um, at a later time. So don't, if, if you are late or if you forgot or something, don't worry, I will send this to you. So the first step is to take some blue paint and paint the background. And I am using a very um, large brush for this, a flat one for this, because, you know, it just covers more area. So it's a little bit faster for backgrounds. Um, okay, but sometimes it does mean that you'll uh, get some paint in places you don't want, like on the table. if. Well, if you're me, you'll get on the table. Hopefully you won't get it on the table, but somehow I end up getting everything on the table. Um, I'm also going to, um, why am I doing that? <clears throat> okay, don't do what I just did and put paint directly on the canvas. I, for some reason, confused the canvas with my actual, um, palette anyway oh and i am using like a really pretty like true blue color but you could use any color you want um for the background i've seen other people you know use different colors for the background like green or red or although the hat's gonna be red so i wouldn't necessarily recommend using red but if you want to use you know like a different color feel free to experiment it is your painting um and i am a huge huge advocate of you know there are no rules in art so which i probably stole from somebody else but essentially you know there are no rules in art because if there were, I don't think art would exist. <laughs> because nobody would, uh, I mean, there's rules, but I, okay, here's what I mean. There are rules, but, and you need to know some of the rules in order to do art, right? You need to know some things like shadow and light and um, perspective and, and things like that. But on the other hand, you, should feel free to experiment and try things. And I also, um, one of my favorite art teachers, her favorite sort of saying is, you learn the rules so you can break them. Okay, so basically you learn the, the art rules, but then you're learning them so that you can break them and do what you want. And that's pretty much how I sort of operate, right? I like to learn what I'm doing. But then once I know what I'm doing, I like to try new things, break the rules, not um, necessarily, you know, do everything that um, I'm quote unquote supposed to, if that makes sense. Because that's the only way you grow and learn. If you don't um, try things, 
if you don't make mistakes, you're not going to actually grow as an artist. Um, sorry, I'm switching to a smaller brush just because um, I don't want to get blue all over this. And I feel like I'm going to. Also, if you're here and you want to say something or announce yourself or ask questions, please, please do. Um, obviously, I adore and will respond to all questions. So please feel free to um, ask away. Um, but anyway, I'm just using this small brush to get in the rest of the blue because, like I said, I was kind of having some trouble with the big brush. Like, I didn't want to totally, you know, paint over all of my um, drawings. So, yeah, let's just get this in. Um, I'm really excited, too, because tomorrow I have a live cocktail making class so um check that out if you're into cocktails you can find it in portland virtual cocktails meetup i mean you can find the info um we're making for thanksgiving cocktails and should be really really fun um because in addition to doing art, I um, have a oops, have a cocktail um, business. So uh, I mean, sorry, I had a cocktail business. Now I have a cocktail YouTube channel called Mystologist, but I also have an art YouTube channel. So if you want to check out either, it's under Mystologist or it's under Paint Party's PDX for the art one. And I highly recommend both of them, obviously, because they're mine and I have so much fun doing them. But uh, it kind of depends on what you're interested in. Anyway, um, okay. So I did the background and probably just dipped my hand in the blue. But what else is new? Okay, so I'm just trying to clean my brushes. I don't, it's, Acrylic paint's really hard to clean. Um, and so uh, sometimes it takes like a little <laughs> more than one like water wash to do that. I don't know if anyone is is here. I don't. Um, I don't know what I just did. Did I mute myself? Oh, I unmuted myself. Okay. So I'm not muted. I don't know if anyone is here, but that's fine. I'm gonna paint this anyway. Um, okay, so now I'm going to paint the donkey. Oh, you know what? Honestly though, I don't really wanna do the hat yet because the background's still wet. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do the eyes now because I like to do the dark black stuff you know like the eyes and the nostrils i like to do them first because on portraits at least because it is a lot harder to um go in later and do that um it just is it you know and oh fudge see or like me you will stick your entire arm in blue paint try not to do that but if you do at least you're in relatively, uh, fudge, relatively good company. Actually, I'm not mad about that because I do have to do, um, that part's gonna be white. The fortunate thing about acrylic though is that it's a little bit easier to cover up than um, other paints, but still wanna try to stay in the, I'm just trying to not to put my hand down because as we saw, if I put my hand down, I dip it into paint. Um, 
which yeah is a little bit more difficult so if you didn't do all of this yet and you want to wait on the bottom blue part i highly um recommend that because you won't dip your hand into blue paint like i did anyway um yeah so i'm just really trying to avoid the background for now since it's wet so I am going to, let's see, I think try to do the fence now. Um, so technically I'm supposed to use the same big brush for the fence that I use for the background, but my brush is still very, very blue. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to um, do the fence and the fence is brown. So, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I am actually using instructions that I have from the, that I wrote myself, but like, sometimes you don't have to, like I said, you can break the rules. You don't have to follow your own instructions, but I like to have instructions for my paint parties. Um, because it makes it easier, especially for people who haven't painted before. It's just nice to have those instructions. Um, but sometimes I don't follow my own instructions because sometimes the paint has other ideas. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint in the fence, try to Stay away from the blue if possible, but if, you know, if I hit some, not the end of the world. There's a really cool thing they say in dancing classes, at least in the ones I take, which is um, there are no mistakes, just solos. And I kind of feel that way about painting too. There's not really mistakes necessarily, there's just really happy accidents. I think maybe Bob Ross used to say that, but I'm not entirely sure so if anyone knows um yeah let me know i'm curious who where i found where they heard that and also why i where i heard that okay oh sorry i didn't finish the fence actually there is more fence um so the fence is also up here I'm just going to kind of messily do this because honestly, there's going to be snow on there anyway. Doesn't really matter. We're just going to paint this brown. Um, okay, so that's brown. Um... And actually, if you want to, you can, you know, take a little white and sort of blend that in with the brown to give the fence a little bit more, a little bit of variation. But you don't have to. I just saw that, like, sort of variation on there. And I actually think it's kind of a nice, like, go past me, right? Past me did a good thing. Okay, so we're just going to... Put some slight variation on here just to make it look more like wood. And probably I got blue in there, but you know what? I don't care. Okay. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so I don't know how dry everything is, but I really want to put the red in, so I'm going to do that. and hope that um, I don't get too much of the background involved in that, but uh, it's hard sometimes to get all the, all the color out of the brushes, like I mentioned. Um, honestly, I uh, started out with watercolor, and my, no, I didn't start, I've done doing art since I was little, but I, um, didn't really use acrylics that much. I was more into pastels and like um, other stuff. Then 
I took a very, very long break from art. Like, I still did some artistic stuff, but I definitely didn't do it, like, as a regular thing. And then I discovered, you know, watercolor during the pandemic. Got really, really, really good at watercolor. I just painted my, uh, my phone stand. Anyway, got really, really good at watercolor. And then got kind of bored with the watercolor and decided that I wanted to kind of just do more art. And so I sort of created my own art school, if you will. Um, I started taking like different courses from various people and studying like different art. And so my latest sort of, I guess you would say it, passion, it has been colored pencils and watercolor pencils but I haven't really done like a ton of acrylic. So I think that's why sometimes I'm still learning along with everyone else about, you know, how fast acrylic dries. And it's, it's very different than watercolor. In some ways it's better. In some ways it's, it's not worse. It's just very different. So I think, and that's okay, it's fine. But uh, there might be some blue on this still. But I did my best. I might need to get a new paper towel because honestly, I, that one is kind of saturated in, um, in blue at this moment. But, okay, so like I said, I'm going to do my best not to get into the blue, but I think it's still kind of wet. And honestly, I'm not hating what it's doing right now. It's basically creating a dark purple, dark red color at the edge there. And that's not that bad because it will give the hat some dimension. And so if you're interested in learning more sort of art rules, please let me know because I, I do have some basic classes that I'm teaching in one of my meetup groups, um, like basic colored pencils and like I want to make it a series. So basically I want to start out, you know, with the basics. And then I want us to do projects together, but the projects will take like three or four sessions probably to get through because they're more um, complicated. Uh, or, you know, you don't want to sit down and make people do like an eight hour um, project. So I'm going to try and uh, make them, you know, shorter sessions but have like several of them if that makes sense so um and so my idea was to do like you know color pencil watercolor like the things i'm familiar with but i would love to know um what people are kind of interested in so yeah let me know um you know i'm open to everything and anything so okay I'm actually going to try to paint the body and the head now, but the problem is the brush I want to use is had red on it. So, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world because we'll be using black, but um, it's not, you want your brushes obviously to be as clean as possible. But if you can see my paper towel, it's pretty, pretty saturated right now with oh, I just got red on my hand again um anyway it's pretty saturated with blue right now so I may need to like get a new um paper towel but hopefully we can use this brush because you know it's black it won't really show the other colors but okay so I'm actually going to do the body now. Try to. Hopefully, it's mostly dry. Again, since this is black, it's a little bit easier to kind of get the um, use the brush without worrying too much about it and mixing with other colors, but. You know, like to avoid that. 
Um, try to avoid the snow down here. Um, okay. Get in here. And I'm not too worried because his face will be black as well. And you could actually do his face too because his face is kind of separate from everything else. So, you know, feel free to do his face at the same time. Um, so yeah, just get that gorgeous black in there. Um, get that black all up in there. I'm, this is really hard. Actually, I'm really resisting the urge to say um, sort of Shrek quotes right now. So, <clears throat> because when I actually first saw this project, I was like, donkey. But um, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so we're going to, although I kind of just did, but we're going to be more black is what we're going to need because, um, and, you know, if you don't want to use that much paint, because sometimes I, I use too much paint, um, you can actually use water to spread it. Um, I'm just not because I really like the sort of, you know, thick black of this so um so I am just going to lay it on there um yeah don't worry if it goes over there's a donkey in nature somewhere that looks like this so even if you do mess up and the black goes over mess up in quotes and the black goes over. There is a donkey somewhere in nature that I guarantee looks like this. Okay. And that happens when you're using a really big brush. Sometimes you can't always totally control where the um, paint has a mind of its own. So I'm just, you know. Like, he has a bigger face now, and that's fine. Um, it's cool. Okay, and then the donkey does go down here as well. So, I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, in the reference photo, but he does continue down here as well. So... It appears the fence is pretty much dry. I'm just going to put Mr. Donkey in here. Okay. So, cool. Uh, let me fix this real fast, actually. There's a little area. Didn't totally get over here. And I'm actually going to his ears but I'm not going to use this gigantic brush I'm going to I guess use the one that's already in the black paint even though it's kind of small I'm going to use this brush and we're gonna paint his ears black um try to get that in again don't worry too much he has a donkey. It's okay if his ears are a little wonky. Oh, that rhymed. Not purposely, but cool. Okay. So just, yeah, get his black in for his, oops, for his ears. Again, don't worry too much if it goes over. We're going to be putting white in there. We're going to be putting some gray in there. So... Actually, say what other colors I was using. Um, I am using red, like a really pretty sort of Christmassy red. I'm using white. I'm using black, and I'm using um, brown. So, and it, it's just like a 
uh, burnt sienna, but any light sort of brown would work. Um, and it doesn't even have to be the same color. You could be using like a dark brown. I mean, it's your fence. Do what you want. You could make it yellow. You could put barbed wire on it. You can do. I mean, that would be kind of sad for the donkey, but it's your fence. So my point is you do what you want with your fence. Okay, so we're just gonna finish these here ears. Shit. Sorry, excuse my language. Try not to, um, screw up like I did, but whatever. He's a donkey, as fur. Okay, um, trying to think if I need to put black anywhere else right now, but I don't think so. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, actually, I should probably use this again. So I'm, go I'm going to put some black down here. Um, this is going to be rough because I don't want to put my hand down. I'm going to do the best I can to put this black in for his, for his mouth. And, you know, it might bleed with the brown a little bit, which is what it's doing. But it's fine. Okay. So next, I'm actually, I think, going to put some white stuff in. Um, yeah. So I'm going to put the snow on the fence post in. Um, okay, and the way I like to do the snow is just sort of tap the white on here so that it kind of looks more like fluffy, fluffy snow. Um, we'll be doing the hat and the pom-pom in a very similar fashion. Because, you know, snow isn't perfect. Snow is kind of messy. Um, so it doesn't need to, you know, look totally uniform whenever. Just sort of put it in. Um, you can even, you know, put it over if you want. And then... I think the ears are too wet, but I think I can get away with putting the white pom pom in over here. So I'm gonna gonna do that. And you know, some black might get in, but honestly the gray helps with the sort of dimensional looking aspect of this, so it's okay if it gets in. Um I'm also going to paint the nose um sort of trying to stay away from areas that look too wet but i think that the nose definitely the nostrils are at this point dry enough so i'm going to put that in also i kind of you know i want to like blend out this black a little bit because trying to sort of show um the shadow down here so it's good that this is still kind of wet you know the mouth is still kind of wet because we can really nicely kind of create a shadow here and i actually kind of like that the nose has some you know gray in it so i'm not i'm not probably gonna fix that because i don't know it's kind of nice I mean, yeah, I kind of messed it up at this point, but um, it's not a huge deal. And also, if you mess up, you can always go over it again later. But the other thing I like to remember is that nobody actually knows you messed up because they don't actually know what it was supposed to look like. So. Okay. Yeah, he kind of looks like he has a cute little smirk. Um, anyway, so if you ever feel bad about art or something, thinking you screwed up, because we've all been there, who hasn't, you know, been there, thought like, oh man, I totally screwed up, you know, that art I was doing. First of all, nobody else is going to know about it unless you tell them. And second of all, I guarantee you, 
if you look back at whatever you think you screwed up on in, I don't know, six months, you won't even remember why you thought you screwed up. Um, if you don't believe me, you know, okay, it's still kind of black, but whatever. Do that. Go and fi- uh, put something away. And then look at it in like six months. And see if you even recall what it was you were upset about. Because you won't. You won't even remember. Um, and in sorry, my brush is a little wet and that's why it's being kind of weird with the white and the black, but anyway, I guarantee you that you'll look back later and you'll be like, what was I even upset about? Like, what was I even, you know, what was I even looking at really is what it comes down to because we just as humans will like forget and so even if you are really really upset about something that you did on a piece of art you will forget what it was and I guarantee you nobody else will notice um and that's the other thing like I've been really upset about because you know nobody is um a worse judge of you than you are you're going to judge yourself, you know, more than anyone else is going to judge you. And so the thing is, you're always probably not, you know, you're always going to find something wrong with whatever you're doing. Um, I know I do. And, but nobody else is going to even probably notice it. So, because I've done things where I'm like, oh, God, this is so bad. And then, you know, my mom or someone is like, no, that looks great. You know, and it's like, oh, Um, and I think that realization is the most important because it kind of makes you realize that you're just judging yourself so much. And um if you just took a second and you realize that like nobody else is actually judging you as much as you are it it's kind of freeing because it's like oh why was i so hard on myself why was i holding myself why are you holding yourself to so much of a higher standard than anyone else was um like would you let's say your best friend or something showed you art that she did would you judge her as harshly as you judge yourself because my guess is no um and so that's what i'm talking about like just okay so i've been painting without actually telling you what i'm doing i'm kind of just putting all the white in now trying to but i'm also kind of you know just playing with it like because there's supposed to be some gray here because it's the ears and I can always go back in and add, you know, make them more white, but I kind of want them to be a little messy. I did the hat and I got red in it and some black in it, but I kind of really like what happened there. I'm gonna try and fix the white here a little bit, but I'm not that mad if it doesn't work. Um. And I think should be able to do the white over here now. There is some black in it because I did get some black in it, but that is fine. Again, I don't, I'm pretty chill about my own art. Okay, so he's kind of got to dry a little bit because we're actually going to start to put in details at this point um and i need to put in black around the eyes and so the thing is that he kind of he's kind of wet and so i can't really do a ton of stuff what i am going to do is put some snowflakes in because the snowflakes 
um, go in the background and on the fence. And so, and that part is definitely dry. Or, you know, appears to be mostly dry. So I'm just gonna put snowflakes in now. And my only, and I'm using the back of the brush. Um, and my only sort of tip here, if you're putting in something like this, is don't um, put them in a line because nature isn't symmetrical and nothing looks less natural than, you know, having everything be sort of perfect and symmetrical. But the problem with humans is that our brains always want things to be symmetrical. Like you can see, I'm actually having to actively avoid doing that because my brain's like, no, you want everything to be in a line. But no, the thing is you you don't want everything to be in a line. Um, I'm gonna put some snowflakes on his hat, but I'm gonna try to like not do them perfectly. I'm gonna put some snowflakes on his body. I'm gonna put some snowflakes on the fence. Um, the other way you can do this is splatter. But the thing is the splattering you'll have much less control over. And um, you, if you're anything like me, you'll end up with paint all over the place. So I don't necessarily recommend it. I do kind of like what's happening here because some of the paint is like ending up, you know, um, coming off the brush a little bit and making like smaller snowflakes. And that's pretty cool, but I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend splattering unless you have a very clean space and, um, you know, aren't too concerned about getting stuff everywhere. Because, again, if you're like me, you'll get stuff everywhere. Um, I'm going to put some snowflakes down here as well, just because, you know, this looks a little weird. And let's see. I think we're good on the snowflakes. Um, yeah, I got paint all over my hand. All right, so our next stuff, like I said, is kind of to put in some details. And actually, I'm also going to put in some white on um, the face because I want it to look a little more furry. And the good thing is that I have some gray in there kind of, so that works out. But basically, we're just going to put some white on the side of his head so that it looks kind of like fur. And if it gets kind of gray, that's fine too. In fact, that's probably a good thing. Um, And I think actually that some of this stuff is mostly dry. Um... Not everything is dry, obviously, but I think some things are dry enough that we can start to maybe add some details. So, but really I'm just going to be adding details to the fur right now. And the way I'm gonna do that is just some white streaks in here. You know, just make him seem more, um, more like a donkey. Um, you know, have some fun. Put, put the white in and if it mixes with the black that's totally fine um but just get some white in here get some white um just to add some texture and stuff to him uh you can even put it you know in the fur over here um <laughs> you don't have to be perfect you don't have to be precious about this just we're just sort of getting some texture in this donkey. Um, okay. And I think the only other details we really have to worry about are, are black. So you can do this with a pen, like a Sharpie pen. Oh guys, also look at my hands. You need to see my hands and my arm just so you feel better if you've made a mess because I have paint all over me. Um, Okay, so we, oh, we still have to do the eyes, around the eyes, but um, I think the main sort of details that I have to do are, um, so I'm just gonna put this black in. 
um, are just black details. So you can use a pen, you can use a paint pen, you can use a Sharpie, or you can use a paintbrush if you feel confident about that. Um, okay, this donkey kind of looks like a demon right now, but I'm sure once he dries, he won't look so much like a demon, hopefully, but right now he kind of looks like a demon donkey. Um, but I think it's just because the black is sort of a different shade because I just put in the edge black, so he is not, in fact, a demon. Um, okay, so let's see. I think I'll put in the white eyes real fast because, I mean, sorry, the people's because I didn't do that yet. So, um, hopefully yours will be a little better than mine are. It's really hard to do this and reach over everything. Um, and you know, that's I'm only doing that because everything's so wet. But, uh, if you are using a paintbrush, which is what I'm gonna do because I don't want you guys to have to wait for everything to dry. So I'm actually going to put in the mouth line again. Okay. And I'm going to use this to kind of put some black, uh, black lines in. So, you know, I'm going to outline Mr. Donkey's nose here. I'm going to put some black around here, black up here, and we're just basically outlining stuff because, um, just so it will kind of show up more. Okay. So just put some black in. And again, you don't have to do this with me. You can always do this later. Um, if you want to, if you want to use, you know, a pen or something, honestly, I don't care if my lines are perfect, so I'm just going to do it now, Whoop. <coughs> but, you know, uh, doing that now runs the risk of things getting a little messed up, but... The best way to do lines, too, is to just hold your brush as vertically as possible and use the thinner brush. Probably I'm using a very, um, like, not a huge brush, but I am using a bigger brush than I probably should be using. But hold your brush vertically and just do it. Don't, um, don't think too much. But if your paint is doing what mine is doing, which is kind of being difficult. I'm actually going to add some water to my paint to thin it out because it will um, spread a little more easily that way. Oh, I'm just going to outline some other stuff, like, you know, his, his uh, thing here, but not all the way. Just um, a little bit. I'm going to maybe yeah, outline his hat a little bit. Um, I'm going to, let's see, what else do I want to outline? Ah, maybe, well, his hat, like over here, I think should probably be outlined. Um, just so it kind of shows up a little better, but I don't really want to cover over that cool shading I got, so um, I'm going to try to not cover that up too much. But, um, and you can go all the way with this if you want, like over here. You can sort of do what, I, what feels right to you. Um, let's see, what else do I want to do with the outlining? I don't know if I want to do much more. Um, I'm probably going to add some sort of lines here to kind of show, you know, 
the fabric fold or whatever. But, um, and then I'm going to put in some, like, details. But that is really still wet. So if yours is still wet and you can't really get the details in, I would wait and, and use, like, a Sharpie or something to do that. Um, I'm just being impatient. Uh, let's see. Should be some sort of details in his ear. Sorry, his um little, what do you call it? Uh, poof as well. So I put those in. Again, you can wait and do those later. Um, trying to think if there's any other details that are that I want to add. But honestly, I think what I want to do is maybe well oh sorry i missed some areas with the black i'm going to put the black um up here and my brush is wet so that's why it's doing that sort of weird thing i will say i think with acrylic it's really good to have a lot of paper towels handy just because it does seem to be hard to get the paint off sometimes. Okay, and I was going to add glitter originally because I really just like putting glitter on everything, but I honestly think that he looks okay the way he is. And I sometimes you do have to kind of stop and... <laughs> I, I like him. He's a little messy and crazy, but I think I like the way he turned out. I think he's really fun. Um, but, you know, do what if you feel like yours needs more um, stuff, then do that. No, do what yours needs. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, donkey. Um, Hopefully you can see him. I think he turned out pretty well. And I have no clue if anyone actually showed up, but that's fine. Um, but I'm going to end this now. Um, and so, but I did record it. So if you didn't show up, I will send it to you. So yeah, have a great rest of your night.